Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we split fractions into partial fractions that contain a quadratic factor of the form ax squared plus b. And whenever you get a factor like this, it gives rise to a partial fraction of the form ax plus b divided by that quadratic factor. So if I take this example here where we've got 5x minus 1 divided by the quadratic factor 3x squared minus 2 and then it's multiplied with a linear factor x minus 1. Then this is going to be identical to and for the quadratic factor here then we write it out in this form ax plus b, where a and b are constants, and that's divided by the quadratic factor, 3x squared minus 2. And then we've got x minus 1, which is a linear factor, so we would say that that's going to be plus a constant, we'll call it c, divided by that linear factor, x minus 1. Next, what we do is we multiply through by the denominator here, to both sides, so therefore, we're going to end up with 5x minus 1 is identical to ax plus b multiplied with x minus 1 and then we're going to have plus c times 3x squared minus 2. Now to get the constants a, b and c best thing we could do is to make this bracket here for the linear factor equal to 0. And so we can do that by choosing x to be 1. So when x is 1, what we've got is on the left hand side here, 5 take away 1. In other words, 4 then. And that's going to be equal to, and obviously if we put 1 in here, we get 0. So that takes out that term. And then x being 1 here gives us 3 take away 2, which is 1. 1 times c is just going to be c. So Therefore, nice value for c, c equals 4. Next, what I need to do is find another constant. And the best thing we can do here is choose x to be 0. If we make x 0, that will take out the ax. So, let's just say when x equals 0. So, on the left here, we're just going to have minus 1, so therefore minus 1 equals, and here, this term here is going to go to 0, we'll have minus 1 in this bracket, so it'll be just b times minus 1, so in other words, we just get minus b. And then for this last term, if x is 0, we're just going to have minus 2 times c. We know c is 4, so it's going to be minus 8. And then if we rearrange this for b, add b to both sides and add 1 to both sides, we're going to get b equals 1 minus 8, which is minus 7. Now to get a, I could choose a value of x, which makes this factor here 0. It wouldn't be very practical though. x would actually equal the square root of 2 thirds. I don't fancy working with that. I could choose another value of x, say x equals minus 1, 2 maybe, but I don't really even want to work with that. What I tend to do is at this stage compare coefficients. In fact, I compare coefficients of x squared. So if we look at that, okay, let's just put this down, compare coefficients of x squared, what do we have? Well, we actually have no coefficients of x squared on the left here. So that's going to be 0, so we've got 0 equals. And then if I look at expanding this bracket, I can see that I'm going to get a x squared. It's going to be the only x squared term. So the coefficient of x squared there would be a. And then for this bracket here, if I was to expand it, we get 3c x squared. So the coefficient of x squared there is going to be plus 3c. c is 4 though, so that's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. So you can see very easily that a will equal minus 12. 
So I think that method beats substituting a value for x in. Okay. So therefore, just cleaning this up, what we've got then is our fraction here, 5x minus 1, divided then by the quadratic factor, 3x squared minus 2, times the linear factor, x minus 1. And we've seen that that's given rise then to this fraction here. a is minus 12, so we've got minus 12x, plus b, b was minus 7, so that's going to be minus 7, and that's going to be all divided by 3x squared minus 2. And then we've got plus c over x minus 1, so it's going to be plus 4 over x minus 1. Now this doesn't look very nice here with these two negatives here. So what I'm going to do is put this term first, okay, since that's positive, that will be 4 divided by x minus 1. And then for this one, I'm going to pull out negative 1. So that means I've got minus there. And then it's going to leave me with 12x plus 7. And then that's all divided by 3x squared minus 2. OK, so I hope it's given you some idea then how you go about handling these partial fractions where you've got a quadratic factor in the denominator.